Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about leaks and specifically the leaks about the upcoming Goggles 2, the O3 ear unit and the Avata drone. Now for those who watch the channel regularly and actually watch my live stream on a Sunday night, you'd have seen that we did talk about the Goggles 2 and the Avata there. However, we now finally have a leaked image of the upcoming O3 ear unit. This is something a number of us had actually seen in the background but we weren't really able to show it because we weren't in the position to leak the image ourselves. However, it has now entered the public domain, which means we can now talk about it. So what I'm going to try and do today is just discuss the overall situation specifically with the upcoming Goggles 2 and the ear unit and try to put you in the picture about what we know. To be clear though, nothing is set in stone, nothing is 100% confirmed. And whilst we have a lot of information, there is some contradiction in this information as well and there are some things that aren't quite aligning up but we have an idea of where things are heading. So hopping over to the desktop let's take a closer look at what we actually have. So, as I mentioned over the last week, there has been a huge amount of leaks over the Avata drone and the new upcoming goggles. They've been posted everywhere. I've got up Drone Excel's website here mostly because it's a single place for me to go to show you it all. But we had all of the photos of the new goggles too with the Avata drone. We could see the goggles there, the remote control and the actual drone itself. We've got box pictures of the drone. We've got some specifications apparently taken from the box as well showing various things. Now in all of this what was clear is the new upcoming goggles too do have removable antennas and they appear to be folding but not actually fixed to the goggles in the box because if we look down they actually list them as a separate item on the box for the equipment. The specification for the goggles has been 1080p OLE displays, they support dual band and they support OcuSync 3 as well and there has been a huge amount of images shared on the goggles as I said that we discussed on Sunday. If we go down here you can see the drone images and then the goggles image from the front as well showing you this new design which is much smaller than what we've had before. We've got these interesting two screws either side. We're not exactly sure what they're for. My opinion is that they're probably for actually attaching external antennas. You can see here that the antennas are clearly removed. We don't know what the fitment is, but they're clearly not attached. And then underneath here, we appear to have focus or IPD adjustment for the goggles as well. What has also been shared is that the V2 goggles are getting updates to support this new drone as well. So you can see there's going to be a package with the new goggles too, but there's also going to be a package with the DJI FPV goggles version 2 as well. And our understanding is the version 2 goggles are getting an update not only for the Avata drone, but also the new O3 ear unit as well. What was interesting in these main marketing images is that they were showing you the motion controller both times and there really wasn't much information to hint that it was going to be compatible with the FPV remote but we did see that in earlier leaks for instance we've seen it here and there has been a box image leak now that does show it with the remote as part of a pro kit. Now whilst the drone side of things is rather interesting there is a lot to talk about with regards to the O3 ear unit as well. They put up this new article yesterday, I think it was, which was talking about the pricing. They're estimating it to be $1,300 in one kit and then $1,168 in another kit. And then there was some talk about spec in this as well with regards to the Avatar drone having a 48 megapixel sensor, 1.1 over 7, which was pretty much what I predicted on Sunday. 4K 50 and 60 frames a second with image stabilization as well. And what they're saying here is the video with the DJI Goggles 2 is 4K 50 or 60 and 4K 50 60 with the new version of the goggles as well and the old ones. It states support for H.264 and 265 which will be on board recording and it has image stabilization rock steady included with the drone as standard. What's really interesting when you go down this though is what they say about the live view modes. The live view with the goggles v2 
is 810p up to 120 frames a second. That makes complete sense because that's what we've had on the FPV drone. But what is odd in this spec is what they're saying with the goggles too, again, being 810p, 120 frames a second. And this bit doesn't really align with what we know about the new goggles being 100 hertz OLED displays. And the information that we were shared elsewhere was suggesting that this was actually 1080p, 100 frames a second rather than 810p 120. I personally think that latter is most likely being 1080p 100 rather than 810p 120 and I think this spec has been mistakenly copy and pasted. They then go on to talk about the rest of the spec down here. So the Goggles V2, you can see the original ones or the new Goggles 2, again, showing you 1080p 100 frames a second or 1080p 60, like I was saying just then. And this is the bit that doesn't really align with what was being said up here in the live view mode. Although it is worth mentioning that might be for something else. In this spec, there was also talk about the Avata ear unit, which is allegedly the new upcoming OcuSync 3 ear unit. Again, 1 over 1 7 inch sensor, 155 degree field of view, image stabilization as standard. And again, they're replicating that spec that we saw earlier that I don't think makes sense. And my belief is this ear unit with the goggles too is going to be 1080p 100 rather than 720 or 810p. It is possible you could have 810p 100. You're not likely to have 120 frames a second on 100 hertz OLED goggles. Now, at this point, this was all we had. However, today we have finally had the leaked image of the upcoming ear unit, and it is this one here. Actually, no. That's not that. That is actually my drawing of the ear unit that I shared on Sunday. The actual image is this one here. So you can now see that we have this new designed ear unit, which we believe is about 30 by 32, 30 by 33. And you can see the new design camera here as well. Now, for those who are watching the stream on Sunday, I discussed this. I actually did that drawing to try and show you a little bit of what it looks like based on what I had seen. And, and, and I think it's a close replica from the side at least. But the reality is this is the actual unit. Now, what we can see here is that new larger camera in the sense of a large plate glass front lens, not like an FPV camera at all, very much like DJI's cameras. You can see the two mounting points with the cable, and then you can see the VTX is a more square design, a bit different to what we've seen on the Vista. You can see these little cutouts down here. This is where we believe the antennas are coming out of. There'll be internal UFLs, and there appears to be a removable panel here here, allowing you to get into that area specifically. There looks to be a USB-C port down here or a connection port for powering as well as the I.O. And there's probably something else on the other side as well. Now, there has been some spec shared for this, as I said, from Drone Excel and many other places, but that spec doesn't quite align. My understanding and my belief based on what we've been shared by some KOLs and some other stuff is that this will support 1080p 100 with image stabilization with Rocksteady, but that isn't confirmed at this moment in time. What was interesting is when we looked at what was said by DroneXL with regards to the pricing of the ear unit, and this very much falls into what I had heard of the pricing being somewhere between $250 and $300, because what you're getting here isn't a, just a replacement for the Vista or the DJI ear unit, you're basically getting an action camera and ear unit in one, hence the increase in pricing. What they're saying here, the overall spec, as I've said, is 35.7 grams, minimum latency end-to-end, -end, 155 degree field of view, a 2.34 mil f2.8 lens, and a 1, 1 over 7, a 1 over 1.7 CMOS sensor, which makes sense considering that using that image stabilization. My belief is it will record 4K60 on board from what I was told, but again, none of this is 100% confirmed.
What we now have, though, is all of the leaked images of everything that is due. We have the goggles, we have the air unit, and we have the Avata drone. We definitely have basically two different products here. We have this new drone, which is going to ship with the option of the V2 goggles or the um, new goggles too, depending on what package you want to buy. And then you've got this new ear unit, which is going to be compatible as we understand it with both the new goggles too and the original V2 goggles via a firmware update. Now, there are a massive amount of questions that people have. For instance, will the new goggles too work with old ear units? Will there be FCC hacks? Will there be 1200 milliwatts modes? Will there be an option to upgrade the V1 goggles? And the answer to all of these is we do not know. The reality is the specification we have is that the goggles version 2 will get upgraded support for this new O3 ear unit and the Avata drone. The new Goggles 2 will support the new Avata drone and the new O3 ear unit. The Goggles 2 are 1080p OLED, dual band, support H.264 and H.265, have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality. We do not know if there's analog video in. We do not know if there's HDMI output. We do not know if there's going to be hacks and we do not know if it's going to support older ear units. All of this will obviously become clear over time. The only thing that is concrete today is the fact that we are just around the corner from a new launch. Now, I am not involved in this launch. I am not one of the KOLs who would have been seeded this product. I have not been sent it, and I will be buying it myself to talk about on this channel once it releases. And if you're interested in seeing that, seeing my independent review of not only the ear unit, but potentially the Avata drone as well, please do make sure you are subscribed. If you want to support us to be able to buy this, because DJI are not going to be sending it to me for free, like they will be many of the others, please please do check out the links to my Patreon in the description as well. It is only by you guys doing that am I able to keep making independent content such as this and sharing with you my thoughts. As I have with the avatar system here, I will tell you exactly what I think about it. I will try to share with you my thoughts, my opinions, but also hopefully some of the stuff you won't see anywhere else. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure that you are subscribed, hit the bell as well. And if you want to support us, please do check out the links. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. It is all unknown. It is all around the corner. Let's wait and see what happens. And I will see you on the other side.